Hi guys, welcome back to the Adaptive Zone podcast. My name is Matthew Boyd. I'm a physiotherapist and running coach. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to like and subscribe. Today we're going to be talking with one of our runners, one of my personal favorite runners, Miranda. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Matthew. So could you tell us before we get into your story of working with us, like just a little bit of background on you and your, like how you got into running in the first place? So I ran a little bit, like growing up in high school, but it wasn't until I had children and I couldn't, I was more of a gym rat growing up. And um, I, after kids, I couldn't really get to the gym. Like I could only steal my little bits of exercise when I could. And um, so I started to run because it was the one thing you could do to get away for a little while and um, kind of clear your head and then I started running more and more like at first I didn't love long distance running but when um, you know it kind of gets addictive when you start adding adding time adding miles so I have I've been running for over a decade my oldest is 14 now and um, that's kind of how I got my start really right that's okay. terrible as an escape from my children when they were babies <laughs> I think it's a very familiar start like I know for me, that wasn't why I got into running because I, I was into running for a number of years before I had children, but that's what it became. Like it became some time to like de-stress, get away from it, uh, sort of come back a better version of me. So I was, um, you know, more capable of parenting again. <laughs> Certainly the last two years, that's the role it's filled more than any other. Absolutely. So um, what you were running and it sounds like, uh, you know, you were... You were enjoying it, you'd settled into a good rhythm, it found a good place in your life. And then you started to have some trouble um, with your running. Could you tell us a little bit about more more about that? Like what happened, how it, how it started? So I guess the last five years before I started with injuries, I had started to run a lot more. I had more time. I was uh, actually had added races. I had never done the races. I started to run half marathons and 5Ks, 10Ks where I could, which really found more enjoyable to have a goal but it also I think made me a little more injury prone because I was running more I had a I rolled my ankle my left ankle running and that kind of knocked me out for a little while I had to have a ligament reattached so then after I recovered from that I started running a little bit more and then it was horrible knee pain all of a sudden in my right knee um, it was torn meniscus I had it scoped so then I was out for quite a while with that. Then I started running again and horrible pain with my knee. Went back in. It had ripped back. It had ripped all the way through. They had to reattach my men meniscus and it was a more lengthy recovery process. But three surgeries, a lot of recovery later. I was, I guess it was more fear than anything when I started running because I was afraid I was going to do it. I was going to tear it again. I was going to, afraid I was going to re-injure. So any hint of pain, like I was trying to get back into running, any hint of pain, I would stop. So even if it was a little bit, I mean, more than anything, I think that was just fear-based. I mean, I had done the physical therapy. I'd done all the things, um, done all the things for recovery. And it just, any pain, and I was just sure I was re-injuring. And that was, was that because you'd been running and then you'd had the the subsequent injury and then they had to sort of do the surgery again you were kind of worried you were gonna maybe re-tear the meniscus or something is that what was worrying you well yeah and the first time i didn't even like i don't know when it happened it just i woke up and it hurt it wasn't even like there was an event or i felt it it was i woke up and my knee i could barely walk on it and you know you when you don't know you don't know but you find out later that it, a lot of people have meniscus t tears and deal with it every day and that it probably wasn't um something it might have been something that I could have avoided surgery with it was I mean you, you learn a lot about knee injuries after you suffer them for a while and read more and read more and I, I think maybe I went into surgery prematurely with that and probably should have done more physical therapy first but um yes I was afraid to re-injure it I was afraid that something I was doing would trigger that again because that was quite painful so you're worried about making the the knee pain worse, injuring the knee further, causing some sort of damage. That was the the concern you had with your running. Yes, and my my knee surgeon. Well, the second knee surgeon told me, you know, do something different. 
like bike or, you know, that you should take up biking, take up a different sport, take up, but I don't love biking. Like I've tried taking up biking. I, you know, we have a pool swimming. That's, it's all great, but it's, it's not the same. If you love running, you love running. You know, it was a little bit defeating to hear that. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, you know, this is looking good. My my physical therapy went really well with my second surgery. He told me maybe, you know, maybe you could take up a lot, like light running, you know, and no long distances, just see how it goes. And I did pick up yoga uh, through the beginning of this. So I have done that for almost three years now. So, I mean, I have picked up other forms of exercise, but that's the one I want to do. So, um, so wh why running? Why, you know, you said, you know, I could do biking and I took up yoga, but why was it so important to you to get back to running in particular? Um, I don't like biking very much because it feels kind of unsafe, especially where I live. There's not a lot of good biking paths and I'm terribly uncoordinated. So like, I, I, <laughs> I don't love biking. In fact, it, it feels unsafe to me, but running, I mean, that's just, it, it's, it's a good release for me and I, a lot of stress relief and it kept weight off too. I did gain weight after, after that. Like I just don't feel as fit when I'm not running and other forms of exercise. Like I can walk all day and not feel like I've really done anything. Mm. There are times of, they just don't scratch that itch. And now I have kids that are running and, you know, I ran a turkey trot with my daughter last November and I mean, horrible pain for weeks afterwards. Like I went into it kind of not really prepped for it and just kind of ground it out and it felt fine during but the after was not great but i want to be able to run a 5k with my kids without really regretting it mm. <laughs> the next day pain for weeks afterwards that must have been um well what were you feeling during that time when you had that pain for so many weeks like what were you what was going through your mind at that time that i really shouldn't be running like that it was like because it felt fine during like when i did the the 5k it was fine i knew by the time I, I mean after the 15 minute drive home my knee was so stiff that i could barely i mean i could barely get out of the truck so i i was like okay this is gonna be this is gonna be regretful yeah, but i mean that was my feeling that what everybody was saying was probably the truth that i probably oh man that must have felt heavy right having been a runner your whole life to be sort of told repeatedly that you maybe should think about doing something else and then to have that experience even with just a 5k which isn't you know not that long for you um and okay so if that brings us up to before we met like what what led you to reach out to to us and, and what made you think that we might be able to help well, i mean obviously big brother is watching and looking at our searches and <laughs> Looking at the things that we click on um, Facebook, and you're a long way from me. You're in Canada, and I'm in Texas, so it's not like we came across each other normally. Um, <laughs> but it was an ad on Facebook, and it actually come up several times. And I listened to your, what is it, your webinar, like your short, what, whatever it was on Facebook, that talked about the three different... The three um, critical components video, yeah. The three yeah. critical components. Yeah. And... Uh, it just resonated with me. It made me think, um, okay, maybe, because I feel like I've addressed the physical therapy part, like the strength training. I have consistently strength done strength training throughout all this. I feel like I had tried the scaling up. I feel like I had not really addressed form. That is something I had not really addressed or ever had looked like the biomechanics piece of it. But I mean, listening to um, the things that you said kind of resonated and made me feel like, okay, you know, this could be just a scam <laughs> or it could be, you know, it could be worth listening it, and it was worth talking about. Like I thought that it would be worth talking about. Yeah. Okay. And, it and then we, we had a chat and you decided to, to give it a shot, right? I remember after our call feeling like you, you had quite a lot of skepticism there. I think potentially maybe because you'd tried so many things before and um that you you just kind of i you got i got the vibe that you thought well it's worth giving it a shot but i don't really expect it to work or i i think it might work but i'm not super hopeful is that is that how you felt like going into when we started working together super hopeful but i was super skeptical because i that's my nature i mean i talked to my husband about it afterwards and i was like look this is 
this is last ditch. Like, if this doesn't take, like, I can probably say I've tried everything to get back into running. And maybe it's just not, maybe it's not meant to be. Maybe it is not, uh, maybe I'm going to need to look at my bike again. Mm. And, um, but I told him, I said, I'm going to commit to it 100%. Like, do what they say. Lean into the coaching. And, um, and, and just see what happens. It's 12, it's 12 weeks. I thought that that was lofty to think that I would get to that the goal that we set within three weeks, which was to run three miles at a time, three times a week, which is really in our conversation. Like I thought, okay, that would be a big goal. Like, and probably I would not want to do more than that. That's what I thought. And then, so in the first few weeks of when you, you know, started the program and started doing the things, what were you, what was your, what can you recall from that period, what you were thinking, feeling and experiencing during that first kind of few weeks? Well, I know you, you may not remember this, but I had some setbacks the first few weeks with like the pain signals and latent pain. Like as some of those really easy runs that I'm um, like the really, I mean, that should have been easy like I would feel good during and then like early on I think the second week I had like I I could barely walk after one of those days like my, my one of my knees was hurting so badly and it was for several days and that was a little discouraging but um the way but I'm glad like I'm glad I had the latent pain I'm glad I hit the obstacles the barriers because because you gave me ways to uh, adjust my training so that I can see how that was done. Because I think that had we just scaled up without any of that happening and had no barriers, then I wouldn't really know what to do to correct course on my own. And I think you have to be able to eventually, you know, walk on your own or run mm -hmm. in this case. Yeah, it can be helpful to hit setbacks. Uh, sometimes it's it's a bit better in like month two or three when you've already got a little bit of momentum under you. In the first month, it can be demoralizing. At that time, do you what what kept you going? Because like you know, you were like, I don't think this this might not work. And then we get you to do all this stuff, and your knee pain gets worse. And for for a couple of the runs, and then you're like, like we are thinking that oh, maybe I should just quit and not do this like I was already skeptical and now this happening or what made you decide to continue because you you did everything right you did every workout you leaned into the coaching you did everything we asked you to um what made you decide to to continue well I mean it's just 12 weeks and I said when I started like no matter what I'm sticking with it so I mean and I, I kind of and you had kind of you had kind of said that early on that, you know, there might be stumbles. And I do think that the, the little educational, um, pieces that are part of the, that are part of the program, those were helpful too. And anytime, like, I, I think that the day that I had the latent pain, I did feel discouraged. Like that night when I could barely walk, I was like, oh, great, here we go. And when I messaged you, I think within a couple hours, I, you had sent a video about latent pain. And I mean, something I think you'd already created, but, you know, just having that, like, I listened to that a couple of times and it felt a lot better to know that that was a normal part of the process. And that, that to me is where I had stumbled and quit in, in previous attempts to get back into running. Like I would have hit that and not known what was, okay, I'm hurt. Like I'm having pain. I need to wait for weeks until this gets better. And that, like the whole um, concept of the adaptive zone and how a little bit of pain was is not a horrible thing. And that's just your body adjusting to strengthen. Like that whole concept is not something that had really occurred to me. So the thought of it, you know, no, don't take off for weeks. You don't have to feel 100% better to, to go back at it. You just have to feel, you know, I guess like what yellow, yellow light pain <laughs> instead right. of red light pain. <laughs> Okay, so that was in the first month. So then we we got another month two and three. Talk to talk us through like what happened during that time. Um, well, I mean, I saw that. I think it was very, if anything, it was very encouraging. It showed me the process was working. To like within a week of having light and pain to be running again and still scaling back up, like that it didn't it didn't set me back that much. I think you adjusted to, and I did. I wrote 
I kept a log of all the adjustments so that I could kind of look back on it if if I needed to, you know, to see that, okay, I'm, it, it didn't set me back that much. I'm kind of like back on course within, I mean, a little bit, but that was encouraging to me because comparing to my, to my regular attempts on my own, it would have set me back. Like I would not have tried to run for a month and then it would be, I mean, it's a, you know, a vicious cycle of never really moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. So manage to continue right with the adjustments and with the, a little bit of um you know guidance and managed to keep going and like i say you would do you did fantastic at doing everything we asked and and sort of using the resources to kind of help you in terms of where you've ended up so where you are now with your running in the last you know few weeks okay so as you know i did not do everything that i was supposed to the the very last week, I fell off the, the uh, I fell off the wagon. We went on our <laughs> family vacation, and it was just it was a little trickier. But um, I was running forty five minutes at a time going into that last week, and I did do that in Canada. And then we came back here, and I've had to scale it back a little bit. Of just took just one week away from Texas and you have to learn how to breathe while running again, <laughs> acclimate to a hundred percent humidity and a hundred degree weather. So yeah. attempted a 45 minute run when I came back and I was just like, okay, I can't breathe. Like, <laughs> but I'm running 30 minutes right now and I'm scaling back up and I know how to do that. And that's not about my knee. That's about my endurance. Mm. So that is not a knee issue. That's an endurance issue and a truly horrible weather issue. How does your knee feel when you do these runs now, these half hour, 45 minute runs? Um, sometimes, sometimes better than others. Sometimes a little creaky. And honestly, this morning I started out a run and um, I just felt a sharp pain in my left knee. And that would have like at one time made me think, oh, this is, this is bad. I need to lay off for a couple of weeks. But I just didn't run this morning. I'm going to attempt to run tonight because it may have been something like it's not I'm not feeling that right now. I just felt that this morning. So um, I, I will run this night if it, it if it hurts. I'll take two days and then run like it's not. I'll get my three runs in this week, though. Mm -hmm. So and then in the future with you running, because like, you know, you weren't running and you're feeling pessimistic about running at all. Now, what are you thinking you'll do in the future with your running? I would really like to run the Houston Half Marathon on in January. I mean, I don't know that we'll see, but I'm for sure going to run. Um, the goal was to be able to build back up to running a pain-free turkey trot in November. I think that's like such a low bar goal now. Like, I feel like I could do that next weekend. So um, we may, I may put a 10K on instead of the 5K for the turkey trot. and work up to that especially since it'll be cooler weather i think my my original goals are probably like really low bar now and they seemed unattainable on may 2nd when we met so that's um that's huge that's not been that long <laughs> yeah yeah and the just the idea that you're like yeah i'm gonna do a half marathon now it's uh and that seems to you realistic whereas running just three times a week seemed unrealistic to you just to a few months ago is it's testament to how far you've come and that's like like you said it wasn't easy there were setbacks and you weren't coming in with you know just having had knee pain for a few weeks this was years and multiple surgeries and lots of physical therapy and like it wasn't um what do you think was different about the way we approached it this time that allowed you to get back to the level of running you have and confident that you're going to go on to more running that you hadn't had before what what do you think was different? Support. Like, I mean, everything that I've attempted. I mean, you go to physical therapists or, I mean, I know that you're, that, that's what you are, but, but I physical therapy, I mean, <laughs> they don't, they're, they're not run coaches. They're just, you know, they're physical therapists and my surgeon is a surgeon. And like, it's, it's, I think what is unique and special about your coaching is that you do understand the physical therapy side of it and the anatomy and physiology. So you can speak to that. Like when you know, when you're, when your runners talk about pain, like, um, and knowing that to me also gave me more confidence that you understood the injury and it wasn't just, 
oh, just push through it. You'll be fine. Like, I mean, as someone who, you know, worked with injured athletes, like you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't give that advice. I don't think willy nilly. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a good point because sometimes like when I talk, I talk, I mean, the podcast is named the adaptive zone, right? It's like, it's about continuing to run. I often talk about training with the pain, not training through it. And that's the best way to get rid of it, right? Which is kind of confusing sometimes. But it's sometimes I think comes across like you just keep running. Don't worry about it, which isn't isn't the right thing. Like you've learned, as you described, when it's okay, but when to adjust and how to adjust. Like, okay, I didn't, I didn't feel right this morning. I understand it now, but that doesn't mean I have to take a few weeks off. I'm not doing myself any harm. I'm going to switch it to tonight. And if it still feels bad, I'll, I'll run tomorrow. And and that kind of change in perspective, I think, is what's going to allow you to continue to make progress because now you've got the skills. Now you understand what the pain means and what it doesn't mean and how to do that dance a little bit. At least that's my perception of the the change in your outlook now is much more optimistic, which is really nice to see. Yeah, it's a huge mindset change. I mean, especially with mostly with how how you treat pain and what pain is acceptable, what level of pain is acceptable to run through, what level isn't. And it took a minute to identify that. Like, I probably listened to that latent pain lesson, <laughs> recording, probably 10 times. Like, and and have, I haven't had to listen to it since. Like, that, I mean, those those are helpful. The educational piece has been huge with the, with the training. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I'm excited to see how you do in the turkey trot. Um <laughs> I don't know. You, will you will you beat fast. your kids so or are they slow. faster than you now? Do you beat your kids when you're racing with the turkey trot or are they, are they too oh, fast no, for you? I do not beat my kids. I am slow, Matthew. <laughs> I am, I'm, I'm running. Um, like We're focusing on volume, not speed right now. Like That's the way. Being able to run for dis- long periods of time. Speed will come, but yeah, I always say like you can't even worry about running faster. You got to worry about being able to run first. Like once you can yes. run, then we can worry about running faster. Now you're able to run, and now it's let's worry about getting faster. Like I'm running 13 minute miles, which is horrible. Like the, yeah, the that last Texas heat marathon. though. You guys are crazy. Like it's so hot here right now, and it's it's much colder than it is there. So I don't know how you do it. <laughs> it's super hot, but I mean the last half marathon I ran, I think it was like a 9:20 pace. Per mile and i'm running a full like four minutes slower per mile so like it it's gonna take some time but do you feel like you can get that back now like or do you think the knee will cause you issue again and stop you like i don't even care <laughs> like I, I might care more like i'm just happy to be be running mm. and i'm just thankful for that and if i'm running slow like i'm who cares? And I might, I might be get more competitive and be back to see you for the performance um, program. But right now I'm just, I'm about volume and getting out and having my run time, having my me time back. And I'm so thankful for that. It's wonderful. It won't last, unfortunately, like having been through a number of injuries. I know when you're injured and you can't run or you're like, if I could only just run and then you get back and you get a month or two where you're just so grateful to be running again and you're so happy but then after you, you start to take it for granted you're like why am i not faster <laughs> it'll, it'll come back <laughs> you're probably right but i'm not there yet i'm still in the thankful phase let me yeah. just rob that out matthew <laughs> yeah it's a good time to be in, like um just to be yeah just to be grateful to be able to run because when you can't you really miss it right so to have that back i think that's a that's a wonderful note to end on so thank you for joining us here yeah. Had run dreams over those a couple years where I would like dream that I was like wake up and dream I was running and mm. it sounds crazy like and it would just make me sad like mm. and I, re- I had a like near the end of this program I woke up having a run dream one morning and I was like I actually get to run this morning like, yeah. it was it like, so it was a nice feeling definitely definitely yeah I think it just speaks to like it does uh hold it's an important part in all of our lives. That's why we spend such a long time on it and why we really miss it when we don't have it. So it's um, it's wonderful to see you to see you back running. And, and thank you for coming on to share it with everyone because I know um, a lot of people who listen to this show are kind of, they feel a little hopeless. So I really like to do these episodes and share, uh, particularly when it's someone like yourself who's tried multiple things, who's had multiple surgeries, who's also had it 
for a long time to see that you can get back to running and in a place where you feel like you can you know go back to running more and more that's um it's very inspiring so thank you for for coming on to share thank you for everything you've done to get me here i mean i oh, would not be here without your program well that's been our absolute pleasure so um yeah i'll, I'll stop the recording there thanks thanks miranda okay